Welcome. Uh, this is Martina Badini. I work uh, in Stockholm University in the group of ultrafast dynamics in condensed matter group. And I'm here today to tell you about the possibility to induce with light an entanglement between electric and magnetic order in a non-magnetic material, which is strontium titanium. So before going to, to the experimental evidence, I will briefly treat the fundamentals beyond this idea because it's very intriguing. And uh, then I will be glad to discuss with you about the possible future outlook of my research. So thanks to be here. Um, so the Terra's uh, light is the one we use in the study. Its uh, energy is in the milliliton volt range which is the, the energy of the low frequency intrinsic vibration in crystal lattice, for example, phonos. And this is exactly what we want to talk about. So uh, the Terra is, is able to, to pump coherently this such a phonon in, in matter. And it can pump to very high amplitude uh, regime. This is an example, a very nice example of what I'm saying. This is a study from 2019. In this study, basically, they went resonant uh, with the terahertz pump, resonant with the soft phonon of strontium titanate, and they directly observed the atomic motion by means of uh, X-ray diffraction, so time-resolved X-ray diffraction. What they could uh, observe is that uh, they could pump such a motion, such a phonon, coherently, so all the atoms in the material were moving in a coherent way, and they could actually spam the electric potential of a strontium titanate uh, of such a mode around uh, the displacement, the, the equilibrium displacement of about 1.3 picometer for the titanium, which is uh, one of the atoms which moves uh, more. I mean, these are uh, <laughs> displacement which are uh, comparable to nonlinear regime. So this is another story completely, but what I want to get from this message, from this study is that uh, actually such a phonon can be pumped to very high amplitude. And so this is what we want to do. What we want to do is even more ambitious in the sense that we want to pump uh, a phonon, but in a circular path. And we want to go resonant with the terrors, but the terrors should be circularly polarized to pump such a motion. The idea is simple because if you if you think that uh, atomic charges uh, in the unit cell are electric charges, so if uh, if you drive them in a circular path, basic physics tells you that actually you can generate a magnetic moment out of it. And so basically, you can generate a magnetic moment in the unit cell of every kind of material, which also the non-magnetic one. Uh, every kind, uh, I mean, I will tell you that uh, some rules have to be respected, but uh, yes, the idea is simple and uh, intriguing. If the formalism was already here in 2017, was published, and it comes as the dual effect of the well-known Katsura Nagawa Balaski one. So Balaski uh, published uh, in 2017, uh, uh, the formalism for what I am about to tell you. Uh, but uh, so for the one who are not familiar for, with the Katsura Nagosa Balaski, it states the possibility to induce uh, an electric polarization by means uh, of a space varying magnetization. Um, and the polarization would have such a form. So if you now imagine to permute the electric and the magnetic field, the space and time and the electric and the magnetic uh, order, let's say, polarization in such a formalism, you obtain what uh, I was saying before Balaski published in 2017, which was called dynamical multiferroism. So the possibility to induce a magnetic moment by means of a time varying uh, polarization. And as the magnetic moment would have the form of uh, uh, P cross uh, D time derivative of P, you now understand why the circular motion is, uh, uh, is important because it would maximize such a product. So our idea is to use the polarization associated to the phonon to create such a magnetic moment. So that's why we choose the strontium titanate because uh, associated to this uh, soft phonon, 
uh, we have a strong uh, electric uh, moment, uh, polarization, let's say. Indeed, the, the such a phenomenon is called ferroelectric. It, it would be the one responsible for the ferroelectric transition of Samsung Titanic, if he would ever experience it. And this is the other crucial point in the sense that you also need to move such a polarization. So you don't need a strong ferroelectric because otherwise uh, it would be harder to, to move the polarization ar around the two potential minima. And again, Samsung Titanic is a good candidate as the, the, the potential minima are so low that actually are enough quantum fluctuation to prevent the material to become ferroelectric. And this is why it is called uh, quantum ferroelectric. So this is the idea. We want to enter in the unit cell of Samsung Titanate with a circular polarized terrace, resonant with the soft phonon, and to drive the atom in a circular path and to generate a magnetic moment inside the unit cell. Please note that by reversing the elicity of the excitation, you would be able to reverse the sign of the magnetization. And this is important if you want to isolate such a contribution uh, in a, the experiment I will, I will present you in short time. So ambitious, but uh, simple and very intriguing. So, okay, let's pass to the experiment finally. This is a, an experiment which we designed totally and performed in our lab. Uh, is, this is the setup, a sketch. So basically we enter with the broad th band terrace pump. We filter it around the soft phonon frequency, which is a, um, three terahertz at room temperature. So here we have a three tera, a narrow band three terahertz uh, uh, pulse, if we can call it pulse. And uh, then we focus it on the sample. The probing mechanism is uh, magneto optical coupling. So basically, if a magnetic moment would be generated inside, then it would couple through magneto-optical uh, coupling, uh, so Faraday or Kerfet, uh, to another probing beam, which we send time delayed with respect to the terrestrial excitation. This is a time resource technique indeed. And what we monitor is in reflection, the change, the rotation of the probe polarization as a function of the time delay with respect to the excitation mechanism. And here on the right, you can observe the, re the recorded curve, so the sample response, uh, are, uh, until are about 60 seconds. As I told you before, it's important to measure left and right uh, circular polarization, because uh, if we imagine that the magnetic moment would reverse the sign with the elicity, then we can perform the difference between these two and obtain what is actually uh, compatible with the amplitudinic uh, moment. So here on the left, I show the time trace of the difference between this dualicity. And as you can see, there is a, a slow bearing component superposed uh, to a fast bearing one. So from the Fourier transform is uh, uh, easy to see. The blue curve is the Fourier transform of the blue curve on the left that uh, the slow varying component is uh, around 0.5 terahertz and the fast varying one is around 6 terahertz. Now it is important to stress that strontium titanate, uh, strontium titanate response would have a lot of leaking from uh, optical responses. I mean, this is a matter of sky and its sky tree is huge. So the field we are sending inside are high enough that we observe all the possible nonlinear mixing up to the third order. So we had to, to study deeply the nonlinear response, which is then non-magnetic, is not where what we are looking for, but is there, uh, to study deeply such a contribution uh, in order to uh, isolate what is not explained by optical uh, responses. And this is the object of another paper. So basically here I can tell you that the green, the pink part is uh, uh, what we can call trivial, which is far beyond for being trivial, but <laughs> trivial um, optical response of strontium titan. And you can see that basically all the six terence component can be explained by such an optical response. The low frequency one is not instead. 
So there is this white part, which cannot be explained by optical uh, thing. So we need to understand if this uh, additional contribution can be actually ascribed to a magnetic moment. So first of all, we did the uh, field dependence. And as you can see here, the two frequency component has a quadratic field dependence, but uh, with a different slope. And this is again an hint that in the omega minus, there is something more because the slope is higher. So if they would come from the same mechanism, chi uh, of strontium titanate, for example, they would have the same trend because it's the same mechanism it would generate both frequencies. So again, here we can tell that there is something more in omega minus, but still we want to link it to a phonon and moreover, we want to link it to a magnetic contribution. So let's go further. We perform a temperature dependence uh, of such a contribution. Here I plotted omega minus with respect to omega plus. So you can imagine that this is the extra white area. So the, the contribution that we, we could ascribe to a magnetic uh, uh, phonon associated magnetic moment. As you can see, the temperature dependence shows a peak, which is at 320 Kelvin, which is exactly the, uh, the temperature at which the phonon frequency is in resonance with our peripheral spa. So here we are in front of uh, a phonon associated process. We are very confident about that. So, but how we can link to a magnetic moment? What we did is uh, to perform a phenomenological model in which we simulated uh, the, the motion of the phonon along the, the two eigenvector, which composes the circular motion. And uh, we simulate uh, uh, the, the, the equation of motion and the driving force was uh, the terrace, the experimental one, uh, mediated by the phonon effective charge. So the coupling with the phonon is uh, done by the phonon effective charge. By solving such uh, an equation, we can uh, extract the phonon displacement, which is proportional to the electric polarization, and then finally evaluate the magnetic moment associated to such a motion, uh, according to the formalism of dynamical multiferroesis. And this is the result of our simulation. On the left, you can see in orange, the simulated magnetic moment, and in pink, again, that trivial contribution um, coming from optical responses. So if we sum the two, we sum the optical nonlinear response of Tronson Titan with the magnetic moment simulated by us, we obtain the blue curve, which is the one you have to compare with the experimental one. They are pretty similar. Actually, you can see it even better in the Fourier transform that uh, we have uh, all the six data is still explained by uh, the optical, nonlinear optical response, and the magnetic moment, which uh, contributes to the low frequency part, and in particular is able to reproduce the white area, the extra contribution. Uh, in, uh, it is actually comparable to what we observe in the experiment. So we are confident that uh, uh, we are in front of the first observation of a phonon magnetic moment uh, in strontium titan, which is not magnetic, I mean. We went a bit further, so we performed temperature dependence of the simulated magnetic moment. And here what you can see is that uh, actually there is a peak, which is exactly at the temperature at which the phonon is uh, around uh, the, the phonon frequencies around the, the, the one of the pumping thing, as in the experiment. So we can reproduce the temperature trend of the experiment and also the, the temperature at which the phonon uh, responses peak. So again, we are, uh, we are very confident and, uh, and I can tell that uh, we, are, we will soon publish uh, such uh, an important uh, uh, conclusion. And after publishing it, uh, what we want to do is would very it would be very interesting to actually go to the X-ray probe to to probe directly the atomic motion and also the with dichroism the to measure directly the magnetic moment. And uh, I will finish now because my time is uh, almost finished. And but I want to thank all. Uh, the co-author, in particular, the principal investigation, which is Stefano Bonetti, which was uh, crucial to, to the study. 
And uh, I will be now happy to discuss uh, with you and to answer to your question. Thanks.